Hey, right Riders, Keith Wheeler here back with another video for you. And we're starting a new year. And what better way to get things started on the right foot than to talk about setting up a production schedule. So I'll be completely honest with you. Last year was not as productive for me when it came to, to my publishing business as it has been in the past. I had goals set and books that I wanted to publish, but I didn't get all of them done that I wanted to. And my number one reason in my opinion, the difference between last year and previous years is I did not have and stick to a production schedule. So today I'm going to tell you real quick how to set up a production schedule. For those of you who may not be familiar with it, a production schedule is just a way that you can stay on track. They use production schedules, you know, for books, they use them for movies. And again, it's a way to keep everybody in line, everybody on the same page, and most importantly, get everybody across that finish line. So here is how you set up a production schedule. It's actually fairly simple. Depending on what type of book you're going to publish, whether it's no content, low content, a written book, a long novel, a children's book, it doesn't matter. A production schedule can definitely help you stay on track. Now, for me, I'm actually in a bunch of different niches, so a production schedule is even more important for me because, you know, obviously my puzzle books, they won't take me as long to do as like a children's book or, you know, one of my novels. So the first thing you need to get yourself is a planner, uh, calendar, something like that, that you can write down dates. And what you need to do is you need to figure out, first of all, obviously what books you want to publish or whatever you're working on, you want to publish throughout the year. You know, how often do you want to publish? So once you know what you're going to publish, you know, what your goal is and how frequently you want to publish, well, then you sit down and you just kind of work backwards. So if you know that you want to publish a new book every quarter, well, then you need to figure out how long it takes you to create the book. What steps are needed to, to get from point A to point B, from, from maybe not even having an idea. You know, you know, you want to do a, this kind of book, you know, let's say a puzzle book or a children's picture book, whatever, you know what you want to do, the type of book, but maybe you don't even have an idea on the topic. So how long is it going to take you to come up with that topic? How long is it going to take you to research it? How long is it going to take you to, you know, if it's going to be a written book, how long is it going to take you to write it, write the first draft? How long is it going to take you to edit it? It's super important to keep in mind the other people that are going to be in the process. Are you going to have an editor, which you absolutely should if it's a written content, even a children's book? Are you going to have beta readers? You absolutely should, even if it's just one beta reader. And even if you're doing no content, low content books, because beta readers are super helpful, not only to, to help you find things that you might've missed, but they're also a really good source of early reviews on your book. So let's say that I want to write four children's picture books within one year. So that tells me that I have about three months from getting the idea to actually publishing it. Okay. So I want to line up, especially the people in the process that are going to take the most amount of time. So in a picture book, it's going to be your illustrators. It's going to be your editors and your beta readers. So you need to figure out how long is it going to take your illustrators to, to put in the illustrations for your 32 page book or 24 pages, however long you're going to make it. Okay. Those are the people, the illustrator and your editors are the ones that you want to kind of get penciled in on their calendar as soon as possible. Because if you know that it's going to take them three weeks to do your illustrations or two weeks to edit your book, well, then you absolutely need to get on their calendar because chances are they're probably busy and they're going to book up real fast. So you work backwards. If you know that you're going to publish a book every quarter, then you know that you've got three months from start to finish. How long is it going to take you to upload the book, get it published, get it approved by KDP or Ingram Spark or whoever else you're going to have it put on. How long is that going to take you? Maybe give yourself a week. Are you going to put it on pre-order? Well, if you're going to put it on pre-order, then that's a whole nother part of the schedule that you need to keep in mind. So if you know that it's going to take you a week, let's say, to get everything published on all the different platforms you're going to have it on, get it all approved and have it out there for people to start purchasing. Well, then you need to figure out at the end of the first quarter, What's a week back? That's when you need to make sure that your book is uploaded by. Now, working from there, what steps need to get done before you upload it? Well, obviously, it needs to be edited, right? It needs to be edited. It needs to be formatted. It needs the book cover done. So all of these things are things that need to be done in chronological order, and you need to work backwards. And the best way to do it is, first of all, jot it down on a piece of paper. 
whether it's electronically, put it on your phone, put it on your computer, write it down with a pen and paper, it doesn't matter. All the different steps that come along with publishing your book and the order that they come in. And then go through and write down how long you think each process is going to take. And processes like book covers, formatting, editors, and beta readers definitely are ones that you want to give yourself more time. So if you think it's only going to take two weeks, give yourself three. Because once one of those things falls behind, if you don't give yourself a little bit of leeway, everything else is going to be thrown off. And especially when you're relying on other people, like your cover designer really can't start on your paperback version of the cover until they know how many pages your book's going to be. Well, you may not know the number of pages your books are going to be until your editor's done because they may add words, take words out that may change the page count. So again, one person taking too long or you taking too long to, to get that first draft done or the second draft or whatever can really slow things down. And that's why the production schedule is so, so vital in order for you to stay on track. Because if you are planning, like I said, in this case, four books in a year, then you only have one quarter for each one. If you run late on that first book, then your second book's gonna be late and your third book and so on. So you really need to try to set realistic expectations. And again, get a hold of anybody that you're gonna be outsourcing to ahead of time and get yourself penciled in. So again, you're gonna write down all the steps that take place for publishing your particular book, whatever kind of book it is. You know, some take longer than others. Obviously a young adult novel is gonna take longer to edit and, and probably format than a children's picture book or a puzzle book or, you know, a line journal, whatever. So you need to make sure that you, you take that into consideration depending on the type of book that you're publishing. So you write all those steps down, working backwards, figure out how long each one's gonna be. Again, depending on how long it's gonna, you think it's gonna take, give yourself some leeway. So if you think that creating the cover is going to take three days, give yourself a week. That way, again, if they fall behind, if you have too much back and forth that you didn't expect because the last time you worked with this person, they got it right the first time, doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna happen this time. And again, work your way backwards. And that gets you to the point where you know how long you have to work on that particular project. You know, for you yourself to write that first version or the second version or, you know, setting up the, the template if it's a no content, low content book or doing the research if you have no clue what you're even gonna write about or, or create your book about. So this again, helps you stay on track by working backwards. Production schedules to me are the best ways to make sure that you get the most out of your year. And me, I mean, I, I do YouTube videos and I do other things out there. You know, I do coaching and all that other stuff. And so I need to make sure that my planner is accounting for all of that. That way, you know, if I know that I've got three weeks to get this book done, well, then I know within my given day, I only have probably four hours a day to work on a given book uh, every day, Monday through Friday, because I take the weekends off for my family. And so that's something that, that I know. And if something happens, something comes up because, you know, it, it just happens, you know, life happens. Then I know that if I missed a day, maybe I was sick or maybe, you know, uh, you know, I went and did something with the grandkids or whatever when I was supposed to be working. Well, that means I probably have to work on the weekend you know, in, in order to, to get things done when they need to be. Because if I hold up things, then everything is going to get thrown off. And that is why for me, the production schedule is, is paramount. I didn't, like I said, I didn't, I, I created a rough one this past year in 2022, and I really didn't stick to it. And, you know, my YouTube channel did great. And the other things I worked on did really well, but I didn't publish as many books as I wanted to. You know, I, I didn't get there's two new books that I wanted to do in my Mimi's Adventure series. They didn't get published. You know, the book two, book three is already written, but book two hasn't been written yet. And I need to do book two in order to introduce a character that exists in book three. So, you know, the, all these things kind of rely on each other. I've got nonfiction books for you puzzle publishers out there that I've got that I want to write and that I'm in the process of writing. I've got nonfiction books for you authors that, that love to write children's books. I've got books coming out for that. And these are all things that I wanted to do last year and I just never got around to because I didn't stick to my production schedule. So 2023 is gonna be a huge year for me when it comes to my books. And I'm hoping that you both benefit from the books that I'm gonna be writing, as well as I hope you benefit from this advice and, and that your publishing business does even better this year beyond what you even could have imagined last year.
Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about how to set up a production schedule, you know, what, where to start, you know, anything like that. I'll do my best to answer each and every question that, that comes along. And I really hope that this inspires you. Regard last year's over. It's done. Doesn't matter how good or how bad it was last year. All that matters is what you're going to do from now on. What are you going to do for 2023? What are you going to do for you, for your author business, and for your customers and potential customers in the future? Because everybody has potential customers waiting for them. They just need your books to be out there. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. It gives me that warm, fuzzy feeling. And hey, all the cool kids are doing it and it's free. And while you're at it, give this video a smashy smashy on that like button. And don't let the learning stop here. YouTube says that this video right here has got your name written all over it. I don't know, I kind of like this one. So you pick one of those videos and I'll catch you on the inside. And remember to write right.